Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about the screw home mechanism of the knee. Um, so what is the screw home mechanism? So it's referring to the rotation that takes place between the tibia and the femur uh, when the knee is approaching full extension. So it occurs at about zero to 20 degrees of flexion. So once uh, the knee is extending and we hit about 20 degrees and then that angle is getting smaller and smaller, um, or the amount of flexion is getting less and less as we approach full extension, um, there has to be rotation that takes place between the tibia and the femur for the condyles to properly align. Uh, so that rotation that takes place as we're approaching full extension is called the screw home mechanism. So which bone is rotating in which direction? That depends on whether the movement is open or closed chain. So if the movement is open chain, meaning that the the uh, tibia, the leg, is what's moving as opposed to the thigh. Um, so if we're open chain, then there's external rotation of the tibia that takes place. So in that case, like let's take a knee extension exercise, for example. Let's assume that the femur is in a fixed position and the tibia is what is uh, moving up in extension. Uh, then the tibia would rotate externally by about 10 degrees to align properly with the condyles of the femur. Um, now let's take a closed chain example. Let's say it's something like a squat. So in that case, the limbs are uh, fixed to the ground. And so then in that case, we would assume the tibia to be relatively stationary and it would be the femur that is moving relative to the tibia in extension. Uh, so when that happens, then we would say that the tibia is relatively fixed and the femur is internally rotating by about 10 degrees to achieve that proper alignment. So as I mentioned, the reason this happens is because we need to achieve alignment between uh, the condyles of the femur and the condyles of the tibia. Uh, the articular surfaces of the medial condyles are much larger than that of the lateral condyles, as you can see in this picture here. So because of the disproportionate size and shape between the medial and lateral condyles, it causes this natural rotation to take place as we're going into extension. And then it reverses as we begin to flex coming out of full extension. Um, so the shape of the condyles causes rolling to occur. So when we talk about rolling, we're talking about arthrokinematic motion. So the small motion that's taking place between the bones within a joint, as opposed to osteokinematic motion, where we're describing the pathways of bones, um, like flexion and extension, for example. So arthrokinematics, we're talking about rolling or gliding or spinning. Those are the arthrokinematic motions that take place between bones inside of a joint. Um, so during extension, so as we're approaching full extension, the tibia rolls anteriorly. Um, so it happens naturally due to the shape of the condyles. But when that happens, it causes the PCL, the posterior cruciate ligament, to elongate. Uh, so when the PCL is elongated, it puts tension on the tibia and causes the tibia to glide anteriorly. Uh, so one of the roles of the PCL is to resist posterior translation of the tibia. So the PCL is going to have a pull on the tibia in the anterior direction. Okay, so the roll takes place because of the shape of the condyles. And then because of the tension that's put on the PCL, that causes glide to also take place. Um, when we're going in the opposite direction, so now during flexion, the tibia rolls posteriorly, again, due to the shape of the condyles. And when that happens, it elongates the ACL, the anterior cruciate ligament. So it puts tension on the ACL, which causes the tibia to glide in the posterior direction. Um, so just to reiterate here, the roll that takes place within the joint during extension and flexion happens because of the shape of the condyles. And then because of the roll, it's putting tension on the PCL or ACL, depending on the direction we're going. So those ligaments then cause glide to take place in the anterior or posterior direction. Uh, the muscles that are involved in this process, um, now again, it depends on whether we're looking at closed chain or open chain, because that's what determines whether it's the rotation of the femur relative to the tibia or the rotation of the tibia relative to the femur. 
So if it's closed chain, so we would assume that the tibia is fixed and the femur is the one doing the rotating, the muscles responsible for that are the internal rotators because the femur rotates internally uh, relative to the tibia in the case of a closed chain movement as we are approaching full extension of the knee. Uh, so the muscles involved there would be all of our internal rotators of the hip. So gluteus medius and minimus, uh, piriformis, tensor fascia latte, adductor longus and brevis, and gracilis. So all of those muscles are going to work together in internal rotation of the femur. Um, so even though those actions are technically at the hip, really it's turning the entire femur, it's turning the entire bone. So if the tibia is fixed relative to the movement of the femur, the tibia stays stationary and the entire femur is rotating even though that motion is initiated at the hip. Uh, then if we're looking at open chains, so in that case, we would assume the femur to be relatively fixed and for the movement to be happening due to the, the motion of the tibia. Um, so in that case, it's external rotation of the tibia. Um, and so that motion would occur because of biceps femoris, uh, but also tensor fascia latte via the iliotibial band. So the iliotibial band provides stabilization at the knee, um, but it also creates tension on the tibia that will result in external rotation during full extension. That's part of the stabilizing effect of the iliotibial band on the knee. Um, and so because tensor fascia latte inserts into the iliotibial band, when it exerts force and it causes tension on the IT band, it indirectly has action on the knee. Uh, then when we're reversing this process, so we're unlocking the, the locked knee or the fully extended knee, in an open chain movement, popliteus is the primary muscle that unlocks the knee, hence its name, like it pops the, the knee from full extension and it pops that locked knee into uh, initiating that flexion. And if it's closed chain, so the feet are anchored on the floor like in a squat, um, then the unlocking of the knee happens due to the external rotation of the femur at the hip. Um, so just like how the screw hum mechanism occurs in the knee because of the internal rotation of the hip, the process is reversed by externally rotating the hip or externally rotating the femur at the hip joint. Um, so by doing that, that unlocks the knee in that closed chain movement and allows uh, the beginning of flexion at the knee. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a great day.